Hi, it's me again, Dave. Glad you could join us because we're still talking about material handlers. But in this video masterpiece, I want to focus on some of the newer operators. But don't worry, don't worry. You veterans will probably get something out of it too. Okay, so new operators need to spend time getting familiar with the equipment they're assigned to. After the pre-operational inspections are taken care of, you need to look over the area where the material handler is set up and evaluate the area for potential hazards. Look for overhead power lines, buildings, other mobile equipment, nearby piles of scrap material, or a guy in a unicorn suit. <sighs> Yeesh, I think I dated his sister once. <laughs> You never know who or what might be in your operating zone. Alrighty, after looking over your area for hazards, check that your material handler is properly set up. What does that involve? Glad you asked. A good setup involves the condition of the ground under the machine, the distance from the load unload zone, and the amount of swing that's necessary to do the job. The swing distance is especially important for both safety and operational reasons. The best machine setup gives you a good line of sight when you swing to the right or the left. This is to say that the operator's line of sight on the work zone shouldn't be restricted by the boom. Swing distance also affects the time it takes to load or unload material. As a professional operator, you must become familiar with this concept. Setting your material handler up at an angle reduces the swing radius, which translates to moving scrap more safely and in less time. A little history bit for you. Back in the days of the cable crane, moving scrap was like a workout in the gym. Pushing and pulling on levers, shifting gears, it was a pain. These days, it's like uh, flying in the space shuttle. <laughs> We've got the joysticks and the buttons and the foot pedals. And as a new operator, you need to know how to work all of them. And don't forget that you should have memorized the operator's manual by now. Now I know a lot of you already know what you're doing in this cab, but for this training exercise, humor me. I don't want you picking up any bad habits. And if you've already got them, I want to help you overcome them. First thing we're going to do is practice with the joysticks, moving them forward, and backward, slowly at the same time. Watch the magnet. I want that to draw a straight line in the air, two feet off the ground. Next, we're gonna test your depth perception. Pick a spot on the ground that you're able to reach with your implement, then without driving the machine, place your implement smoothly on that spot. When you place the magnet or grapple into a scrap pile, think vertical, straight up and down. When you lift, lift straight up. I see too many operators get in a hurry and lift while the boom is still moving horizontally. This creates a dragging motion that tears the crap out of the lines and hoses. I mean, think about it. You're dragging hoses and electrical connections across sharp scrap metal. Of course they're gonna get hurt. Pretend you don't have a portable radio. Somebody wants to talk to you or get your attention. How else are they gonna do that? In the material handler operating business, there's a set of internationally recognized hand signals that you need to understand. If you don't understand what the guy on the ground is trying to tell you, you've got to stop what you're doing until everyone understands everything. It's just not worth the risk of guessing wrong. Honing your skills and committing yourself to doing things the right way every time are a part of the one job you have that's more important than any other working safely or not at all.